Governor Cuomo. And thank you all. Let me, I know you have other speakers, so I'm going to be brief, but I want to get to the point. Number one, as I look to the future, there is no debate, as the governor has just told us, that we must defeat the worst Republican candidate in the modern history of this country. Now, it is not unusual for Republicans not to want to raise the $7.25 an hour starvation federal minimum wage. That's Trump's position. That is other Republicans' position. It is not unusual for Republicans to believe that climate change, one of the great environmental crises facing our planet, not unusual for Republicans to believe that it's a hoax. That's Trump's view, not unusual. But what makes Trump unusual is not just that he wants to give huge tax breaks to billionaires and cut programs for working people. What makes Trump different is he is, in fact, a demagogue that does not respect or understand the Constitution of the United States of America. And that, by the way, is not just the opinion of Bernie Sanders. That is the opinion of conservative Republicans. So we have got to defeat and defeat soundly a candidate whose cornerstone, the cornerstone of his campaign, if you can believe it, is bigotry. He is running for president of the United States to turn one group of people against another group of people. That is not acceptable. That will be defeated. You start with Mexicans and Latinos, and you go to Muslims, and you attack women, and you are a birther trying to undermine the legitimacy of the first African-American president we have ever elected. That type of mentality does not and will not ever see the inside of the Oval Office. So our first task is to make sure that Hillary Clinton is elected our next president. But our second task, in my view, is to continue the political revolution whose goal is nothing less than transforming this country. There is no excuse, none, that we are the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to every man, woman, and child. There is no excuse that for the last 40 years, the great middle class of this country, which my father was a part of as I grew up in Brooklyn, but for the last 40 years, that middle class has been disappearing and people in New York and all over this country are working longer hours for lower wages despite huge increases in technology and worker productivity. There is no excuse, morally or economically, when the top one-tenth of one percent now owns as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent in America, of Americans, and where 85% of all new income today is going to the top 1%. That is not acceptable, and together we will change that. You know, the media, as you all know, they're interested in polling and how you raise money and some dumb things that some politician says. That's not what the American people are interested in. 
What the American people are interested in is making sure they can put food on the table for their children, that their kids can go to college, that their communities are not a toxic dump. And whether the media is interested in those issues or not, those are the issues that we are interested in. When Governor Cuomo talks about raising the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour, that means that millions of people who lived in poverty no longer will live in poverty. That's a big deal. And when you pass paid family and medical leave, it means that when a mom has a baby, she can stay home with that baby and not be forced to go to work in a week or two. So our first task in the next few months, and I know we'll all work hard on that, is to see that Secretary Clinton gets elected. But our second task is never to lose focus on the most important issues facing the working families of this country. And our third issue is to make sure that this country does not move toward a political oligarchy where a handful of billionaires spend hundreds of millions of dollars electing candidates to represent the rich and the powerful. Together we will overturn Citizens United. <laughs> Democracy is not billionaire families like the Koch brothers buying elections. That's not democracy, that is oligarchy. And fifthly, what we have got to do in New York State and throughout this country is expand democracy. It's to see that as a nation, we have the highest voting turnout rate in the world, not one of the lowest. And that means that the Democratic Party has got to open its doors and welcome in Welcome in young people and welcome in working people. So I just want to thank uh, all of you, the governor and all of you, for the work that you have done in making New York State one of the progressive leaders in this country, to show that progressive politics can work. But I also want you to know, and I said this last night, yes, we are way better off today than we were seven and a half years ago when Bush left office, no doubt about it. But never for one second forget that in our country today, there are tens of millions of people who are hurting. There are children in grossly inadequate schools, parents who cannot find affordable childcare, elderly people trying to figure out how they're gonna live on 10 or $11,000 a year social security. So New York, thank you for all that you have done. The political revolution continues. Our job is to transform this nation.